This podcast is proud to be part of the TalkSport Fan Network. TalkSport. Powered by fans. Hello from the other side. Hello, good evening and welcome to another episode of the Wednesday Week Hello from the Other Side edition. My name's Dan Fudge and uh, with me tonight I've got from podcasts, and I hope I get this right, Wise Men Say, I've got Richard Easterbrook. How's it going, Rich? You all right? I'm good, Dan. How are you? Yeah, not so bad, not so bad. Hell of a day of it on the interwebs. Um, <laughs> as you can probably imagine, our, um, our our fan base is quite fractured at the minute and, uh, and everything's quite polarised. You're either in or you're out or you're against it or you're not. And uh, and I think there's, there's there's a phrase they use in Star Wars where they say only a Sith deals in absolutes, and uh, and that's where I've got right now. That's uh, yeah. that's what's happening. Although you lads aren't doing too bad, so uh, just going to get you on, keep you on for a few minutes, talk about the upcoming game this Friday under the lights at Hillsborough. Um, now, last time we played a team from the northeast under the lights at Hillsborough it was last Tuesday. We earned our second point of the season. You lads seem to be going great guns at the minute. I mean, uh, not so much in the last game, right? No, well, we had um, well, we had a we had a, a start of the season that saw us lose both games um against Ipswich, then um then Preston, but mm-hmm. we went on to uh, to get um f- uh, four wins from from the next five games, wow, um, including three three on the bounce. Um, Rich, Rich, so, what what's that like? Tell us, tell us what's <laughs> what that's to be, like. <laughs> to be honest, the, this time last week we were we were all kind of like, well, this is new. Because we had mm. we'd, we'd won three in a row in, in League One, but it's not, you know, it's it's not the same. You know, if you're beating mm-hmm. Shrewsbury as part of your three wins in a row, it's like no, it's not the same. Tell so, us about it. so it felt a little bit like un, uncharted territory for us. So we dealt with it as well as we could, and then promptly lost the next match against Cardiff. Um, so, so, so everything's back to normal again. Yeah, everybody's back whinging on the internet. I assume, yes. Um. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Unchanged team and the unchanged team suddenly became the problem yep. in this match. Yep. It, it's and at the time we we just put it down as one of one of those games, just one of those where we kind of dominated seventy percent possession, loads of shots on target, and they had their first attack ten minutes from the end and, and scored from it. So, yeah. I mean, all right. So uh, you were the team that took us that beat us in the playoffs the other year, uh, went yeah. up to the championship, stayed stayed Sorry. up that type of thing. Hey, listen, don't apologise <laughs> about it. Uh, you know, if we still have the manager and we still have a lot of the players, I'd be going, hey, it made us stronger. Turns out <laughs> it didn't. Uh, getting <laughs> getting promoted this year uh, made us less stronger. Uh, but like, t- you know, tell us about the season. Was it? Did it go as uh, you know beyond? your expectations of how it was going to go or or do you feel like Sunderland's one of those teams that should be up there kicking around a lot like Middlesbrough should be really mm, well, it was it was a massive surprise really um it was although we made signings over that summer a lot of the signings we made were, were just making loan deals permanent so the likes of Jack Clark and Patrick Roberts that were both in on on loan loan deals towards the end of that that league one season um they were made permanent and we, we signed a couple of others here and there, a couple of free transfers from all the Premier League clubs, but still untested players. Mm-hmm. So we weren't really expecting anything, really, uh, especially when when we lost our manager. Like Alex Neal left a month into the season. I don't think it was even a month. I think it was three weeks into the season. He left for Stoke. We mm-hmm. thought, right, well, there we go again. Uh, but Tony Mowbray came in um, uh, as, as kind of instilled this this positive enthusiastic forward forward playing football and which which shocks you with somebody like Mowbray right because like yeah I, yeah you just don't expect it of him do you no no I mean I'm my I'm, I'm previously a, a sports journalist so and I covered Middlesbrough when 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 Mowbray was in in charge at the mm-hmm. Riverside so I kind of like I kind of knew that that he has got that ability to kind of pick up a, a very young side and, and kind of take these rough diamonds and, and polish them up um but at the same time I, I knew that his sides often fall away as well um mm-hmm. so for him to put a full season together there was a couple of dips here and there but to finish sixth albeit with 69 points which is which is quite a low return it was it was just it was just it was really good fun to be completely <laughs> honest it was with it not having the expectation because I'm sure you guys had it in league one you know, winning every match when when you win matches, you know, you, you've got a you know remarkable points total last season. It would still be well, you, you Sheffield Wednesday, you're expected to win those games in League One. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, yeah. We we had that for four years, just kind of mm-hmm. the inverse snobbery of 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 other teams coming to us and saying, "Well, well, you should be beating us because we've, you know, one one of your players is, is the same as our entire squad." So yeah. the expectation was was off us coming into the championship because because we were, you know, fledgling inside, but incredibly sixth place and. You know, there's been times, it, or, you know, the season is very young, but there's been times this season where we look to be replicating that kind of style of play. So it's been, it's been nice again. You know, having those three wins on the bounce, um, it made Sunday feel a little less terrible. Well, that's it, isn't it? I keep saying on our show, if um, if I could predict how the results were going to be, I'd be a millionaire every week. Uh, but that's the that's the you know the the goal of the championship, isn't it? Any team can beat anybody. You know, there's there, well, unless you're Sheffield Wednesday, of course, who's not managed to beat anybody <laughs> this season. But you know, there there is always an element of any team. I mean, looking at the likes of um, Coventry and Luton getting to the playoff final last year, there must be a part of your fan base, and it must be a huge percentage of your fan base that thinking you could go all the way this year, right? Yeah, I think the the, the difference this uh, this season was there was a lot of outsiders as well, like a lot of mm-hmm. boogies and a lot of I have kind of. Like the, the 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 championship podcasts were saying, we should be finishing top three, um, which at the time uh, I, I still don't agree with it. You know, the players that we brought in have a little bit of pedigree behind them, only only by attachment to the clubs that they've come from. So, you know, we've signed mm-hmm. a player from from PSG. Um, we signed a player that was once named as the next Zidane, which you hear quite a lot. <laughs> so, so you know. These these players are, are are unproven in the championship. So so to think of us finishing in the, in the top three when when you had the teams coming down like Southampton, mm-hmm. like Leicester, um, Leeds as well. Obviously, you think it's going to be a much tougher tougher league, and especially with the teams coming up as well. You know yourselves, Ipswich, you know Plymouth. You you, you couldn't you, you you couldn't beat Plymouth last season, and you, and you got you know over ninety points. So. So shows how good the league was last season coming up. So yeah. it has made the league a lot tougher. And we thought, well, we haven't really improved that much. We finished last season with 69 points, which, as I say, it's low, a low amount. That probably won't happen again um, for some time. So we're, it's, it's going to take a lot to finish even top six, I still think, for Sunderland. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, you're right. The expectation is starting to build a little bit. You know, the people are... Especially yeah, with the neighbours doing so demand. well as well. Like yeah, with, with, with them up the road doing all right and all, you must be thinking, I want to be up there. I want to be playing them. Mm. I want to be in and around it. I want to take take yeah. some points off them. Surely you must be thinking that. Yeah, well, yeah. The last time we were, the last time Newcastle were doing doing quite well was you know mid nineties with with Kevin Keegan and then Kenny Dalglish after that, and we were weren't really doing anything at all at that point. We were languishing in in mm-hmm. the, in the foot in the first division as it was then. So. Mm-hmm. It always seems to be this cycle that once them up the road start doing well, we seem to start to struggle. Um, and I don't think there's been a season in the last twenty years where we've we've played Newcastle and we've been kind of they've been the force that they were. Um, right. So, so if we were to be promoted, I'd, I'd be really worried if we were promoted now. And haven't yeah, especially what, especially what they did to our neighbours the other day. Like you don't yeah. fancy it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, it was, and it was mixed emotions for me on Sunday because um, I, I, I lived in Sheffield for a couple of years and I, I naturally mm. chose I naturally chose Wednesday as a team that I'd come and follow. Um, I lived in Essex, so I was at the top of the hill looking down mm. on looking down on the ground. So I'd, I'd come to a few games. So I, I just naturally don't like Sheffield United and I naturally don't like Newcastle United either. So so, so <laughs> I didn't really want to watch the game at all on Sunday. So I don't not sure. How good that result was for me, probably not at all. It was, well, it was a no-win situation, really. Well, bear in mind, your neighbours about twenty-five years ago did us eight 0 at their gaff. Um, so you yeah. know, uh, we've been posting the memes, we've been laughing at them, but you know, same exactly the same thing happened to us. The only difference is, is that it was at their house as opposed to up in uh, up in the northeast. So normally at this point in this segment, I'll sit and ask, "Is there any players that stand out from our side to yourselves?" Um, but given the way our season's gone, you must be sat there thinking this could be about three or four nil, right? No, not at all. No. Um, so we had, we had Ipswich, you know, play, we played Ipswich mm-hmm. first game of the season. They were really impressive. 
Mm. Um, I know you guys have had, you know, disruption over the summer. Um, it's a to, very to nice it, way of putting it. <laughs> it, it. It was a difficult summer. So <laughs> yeah. you guys have struggled in, in that respect. Um, I'm not sure about the strengthening that you've, that you've made, the signings you've made. Um, but, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big Barry Bannon fan. Um, mm-hmm. and this goes back quite a while as well. I remember we played, I can't remember which game, I think it was in the, in the championship where in our relegation season, and I'm sure mm-hmm. Bannon played against us then and he looked, just looked a class, a class apart, a class apart mm-hmm. from us as well. Every time I've seen him, I was naturally gravitate towards him. So, so yeah, he's, he's, I'm not sure if he's fit or. Or, or, or whether he's in favour or whether he's going to play well, but he's always the player that I think can do the most damage. If you ask, uh, if you ask half of our fans, he shouldn't be in favour, but he clearly is our, our best player. He clearly is the, the person that that you do notice in and around the pitch, move, you know, moving the ball. It's the players around him that we don't seem to have got. We managed to sort out our midfield last season under Darren Moore. We managed to sort out our, our midfield. We had three players in there. We had Byers, Bannon, and Volks. And we still haven't had those three play together since this season started. And any any Sheffield Wednesday fan would answer that that is that was the best thing that we did in terms of the unbeaten run that we went on last season. Um, this season's been obviously a tumultuous summer, and I, and I agree completely with you. Um, the, the the disruption that we had was we, we didn't need it, and I agree with you about the signings that a lot of them have been quite average if, if, if i'm honest like we tried to sign squad players i think or we tried to sign youth and given the given the form we're in i don't think we're going to bring any of these youths on and we've just signed a, a kid from um from psg a young guy called uh, gasama and we've only seen him on a substitute appearance so i don't i don't know what to do because like i said to you before we've got this we've got this league where anybody can beat anybody and you just know that we're going to get points against somebody that we have no right getting it getting it against, given the amount of goals you've scored, given the games that you've played and the teams you've played against. You know, there's going to be an element that, that we end up beating somebody who's absolutely romping away with the league or, or, so, or something like that to get that monkey off our back. But I mean, so... <clears throat> so in terms of in terms of going forward, do you feel like this Friday there's going to be a lot of changes to the team that, that you've uh, got against Cardiff? I'd think... With with the time the time involved, we played Sunday, but before that we played Wednesday. Um, so there's been quite a few games, and we have named unchanged unchanged sides through that as well. You know, the likes of Alex Pritchard, he's he's played two ninety minutes in a in a in a row, and he's you know he's pushing thirty. So, mm-hmm. um, which make, which makes him like ancient in Sunderland yeah. terms. So, <laughs> but um, that said, all of the fringe players played in the reserves last night. So. Uh, I think there'll be one or two changes, but not not wholesale. Um, like the signings were made in January, not in January, in August, aren't yet ready to to start. Uh, with the, the exception of of Mason Burstow, who came in from Chelsea, um, mm-hmm. he started the last few games, um, but hasn't really had any chances. Really, um, we've kind of just got used to playing without a striker, so it's been quite difficult for us to integrate a striker back into the team and. And, and yeah. the, the mindset of the midfield has to change from creating chances for themselves to creating chances for for the man in the middle. Um, so, so that, tell me about that. Tell, tell me about this strikerless formation that, that you're doing here, because uh, you know, like you mentioned earlier, that Moby likes playing attacking football, and you've not got anybody up front. I I I, I don't no. know how it's working. Well, yeah, that's it's it's been quite surprising. Um, because obviously last season we had we had Ross Stewart and. Uh, Ellis Sims, who was on loan from Everton at the time, um, and then we got uh, got Gelhart in from um, from Leeds, and he was signed supposedly as a number nine, but he, he he's not that kind of player. Then our um, director of uh, our sport and director said in a podcast in January, um, after signing no strikers, that we don't usually play with a number nine anyway, um, which, which was a little bit odd. But he did actually kind of prove us prove himself to be correct because we had to play without a number nine we kind of adapted so we play mm-hmm. with we play at the moment we've got mason burstow playing as the number nine but previously we've had bradley dack um who was unfortunately injured with a hamstring injury um, Oh no! But, so we've also had we've had um 
um, Bellingham, Joe Bellingham, he's been playing in in that kind of most advanced role. Um, mm. But it's it's interchangeable. So you have two wingers, but then you have one of many attacking midfielders kind of just rotating and, and going in that centre forward position. But it, it means there's no plan B for us. Um, yeah. So if you figure out how we play, you've got us, you've got us worked out. And this is what Cardiff did on Sunday. They mm. kind of nullified us and we couldn't really find a different way to play. Um, well, given uh, given the way, you know, uh, our managers performed and the way he keeps chopping and changing our team, I don't think we're going to work out how anybody plays. God, this is really bad, isn't it? I, I should be sat here going, come on, bring it on. But like, I tell you what, tell me about Bradley Dyke. So a player that Mowbray knows and um, and he's, uh, and he's uh, God, I'll tell you what, Bradley Dyke's up, up for grabs. And a player that was injured a lot under Mowbray at his time at Blackburn. You know, mm-hmm. he was out for about nine months, wasn't he? And then uh, and then he started shagging Love Island. And then you've got that Love Island supporter of yours as well. Oh, it, go, it goes deep. Yeah, I've done my own work on the uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, on the, yeah. the Love Island Bradley Dyke. Chris, is it Chris Hughes' love Chris triangle? Hughes, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, that's, so that must be heartbreaking for him. But I, 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 I'm intrigued by Bradley Dyke because I feel like for any team, he would have been a bit of a gamble in terms of the way he plays football because you'd have to kind of build the team around him a little bit. And in terms of you're going to end up spunking money on wages on a player that's only going to play probably 10 to 15 games a season, right? Yeah. A, a lot of the fans were, were quite surprised by the move for him because although it did make sense because just because of the fact they'd worked together and he was available and we were looking for a kind of attacking midfielders at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, we already had Alex Pritchard, who are very similar types of players. Um, but I think Dak's goal return over his career is, is better than Pritchard's. Um, mm-hmm. Just not in the last, not since his knee exploded, really. He's not he's not been able to, to replicate those goals. Um, so I think he scored one or two for us since, he's, since he started. Um, but it just hasn't really... We haven't really seen the best of him yet. I don't think um, the Southampton game that we, we won five nil. He was he was played the most. He played the most advanced uh, mm-hmm. role. He was furthest forward out of the midfielders. Um, he looked good and he held everything together. Um, but now he's now he's picked up by injuries. We're, we're probably not going to see that for a while again. But you've got to, you've just got to wonder what the club were thinking at the time whether they want to move Pritchard out. Um, and what the, what the kind of justification was for that because they're both around the same age um i'm not i'm not yeah. sure what, what kind of wages are involved but I, I, I didn't see the benefit of moving out one player who was quite established at the club and quite a vocal presence in the in the in the changing room to bring someone else in that that wasn't but is the same age and probably commanded a bit more money as well so it was a bit of an odd one for me but if you know if if he can bring something different to the team i can't really argue with it well, yeah, I mean, Dax, uh, Dax, an exciting player. I uh, I went up to go and watch Burnley versus Blackburn up at um, a, a, a mate of mine who I was living in Southampton at the time. Southampton, a mate of mine supports Blackburn, so I says, "Oh yeah, let's drive up." You know, when you get pissed up in the pub and you go, "Yeah, let's do that. That'll be a right laugh." <laughs> it was it was a six hour journey, and the irony that Sheffield Wednesday were playing away at Bolton, and I had to drive past Bolton to get to Blackburn versus Bloody Wigan. But I think uh, Rovers won three um, 0 and um, and Dak is sublime, like the way. He, I, and this is pre-injury as well. So you know, I, I I hope you get the Dak. Obviously, outside of this this game coming up this Friday, and not to much of the detriment of my own team. But I hope, in terms of for him and for your club, and you see that side of Bradley Dak before his injury, it's absolutely something to behold. The way he can move and the way he can is exciting to watch. And, and we spoke earlier about Bannon being that player that catches your eye. Bradley Dack is one of those, unless obviously you're Chris Hughes, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure he'll be sitting on his hands every time Dak scores a goal, <laughs> turning the other way. All right. So in terms of uh, in terms of Friday night, then um, how do you how do you think it's going to go? I mean, are you, are you predicting a, an absolute smashing, or or is it always a potential banana skin to go to Hillsborough on a Friday night under the lights? I think yeah, you've just rolled out all of the all of those cliches there. <laughs> um, I, th- I, I still think it's a you know I'm, I'm, I always err on the side of caution. I, I, I don't want to be that arrogant away fan that comes on a podcast and say, "Oh, we're going to smash it full of quality." 
Um, oh yeah, because I'm going to clip it and replay it for like yeah, the rest exactly. of the week if, if we <laughs> exactly. get a nil-nil draw. You could even just clip that bit where I just said we're going to smash it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's um, I don't want to I don't want to say that we're going to we're going to smash it because I don't think we will. I think mm-hmm. um, if you guys stay organised, um, you, you're probably in with a chance of, of if you you know you stop our most power our most stronger players are on, on the wings. So the likes of um, Abdullah Bar, Patrick Roberts, Jack Clark, either one of uh, you know two of those three will start on, on Friday. They're really dangerous when you get them on the ball, um, mm-hmm. and so it's just finding a way to stop to stop them without kind of um, taking your eye off the off the the more creative midfielders in the centre of the park as well. So I think if we score early, it might be a different matter. Um, it's usually once we get into our groove, we, we rarely get out of it, but. Mm-hmm. If you could, if if you can score first, it might it might be a different matter. So I'm very very much sitting on the fence there. Yeah, I was going to say them splinters on your ass are going <laughs> to yeah. uh, going to cause yourself a, a nasty injury if you don't get some ointment on them. Oh, all right then. Well, listen. So I appreciate your time, Richard. Thanks a lot. Listen, I uh, hope you have a good time coming down on Friday night. I hope the Sunderland lads. I I don't believe. I don't. I don't know this hundred percent. It was it was true a couple of years ago. I don't think they sell beer on the away end. So uh, do with that information as you will. You know what I mean. Yeah. But uh, Rich from Wiseman say thanks a lot for joining us. See you later. This podcast is proud to be part of the TalkSport Fan Network. TalkSport. Powered by fans.